Parshas Ki Siso, Shabbos Parshas Pora. So we pass Purim. And once we pass Purim, you know where that leads us. Before you turn around, it's going to be Pesach. And now we have the last of the two Dalad Parshias. Next week's already Shabbos Parshas HaChodesh and the Chodesh Nisan, and then Pesach is here. I hope everybody had a very meaningful and good Purim. And now we're going to speak about this week's Parsha. The Pesach says near the end of the Parsha. Everybody knows that we begin the Parsha still talking about the Mishkan. And after the Mishkan, we move a little bit on to Shabbos. And after Shabbos, uh, we have also the, the episode of the Egel and the Luchais and all these things that we, we've really spoken about them a lot over the past 13 years, Baruch Hashem, of the Shir. But there's something at the end of the Parsha, like hidden away over there, that I want to speak about because most people, there's so much going on in the beginning of the Parsha, and then you have right the Parsha we lay Vayichal and, and Psal Chash, they look all about the Luchais, and this, this seems to be a little bit hidden away. And the Pesach says, Vayoyimer Hashem al Moshe. Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, and we're discussing now about a special covenant that happened between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Klau Yisrael. Ksav l'chos hadvorim o'ela. Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu that I want you to, to write down these words, ki al pi hadvorim o'ele, because through these words, korati itcha briz ve'es Yisrael. You need to know that I want you to write this down, because through these words, there's going to be a very special covenant, a special bond between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Kalal Yisrael. So the question is, of course, what exactly was this bris, was this covenant that was being sealed over here? So in order to answer this question, we need to look back. The Medrash Tan Chumon, the Siva Shalom brings down, Medrash Tan Chumon, Parshas Noyach. The Medrash tells us that the bris here that was made with Klal Yisrael is the bris of Torah Shabal Peh. What we know as the Torah, we know the five books of the Torah to our Torah Shabik Sab, and the Torah Nevi'im Ksuvim, but then we have a Torah Shabal Peh, which we know, we learn Talmud Babli, we learn now, some of us, Baruch Hashem now, also learning Talmud Yerushalmi, this bris that we're referring to at the end of the parsha is the bris of Torah Shabal Peh. Because we see the Pasuk says, Ki al pi hadvorim o'ele. The Torah doesn't say, Laman hadvorim o'ele. Ki al pi hadvorim o'ele. Al pi refers to the Torah Shabal Peh. And that's the special connection that Hashem wants with Kla Yisrael at this time. We know that Torah Shabal Peh, right? Anybody who learns Gemara, we know that Torah Shabal Peh is hard to learn. The Chazal tell us that when we learn Torah Shabal Peh, you, you, you lose sleep over it, you wear yourself down, you work hard, and the only way to actually learn Torah Shabal Peh is the only people who actually learn it are those, you learn it dil diligently, these people are those who love Hashem with all their heart and all their soul. A lot, a lot of work goes into learning Torah Shabal Peh. And it's that special bond of the people who are learning Torah Shabal Peh, who are learning, the people who out of a great love for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, have Masiris Nefesh for learning, you stay up at night, you work out a sugya, you go through, you learn Tersh Baal Peh, you learn Rashi, you learn Toysvis, you go through all of that. For that work, 
That earns you a special bond and connection. And that is the bris, the covenant that's mentioned at the end of this week's parsha. Hashem says, Ki al korati itcha bris ves Yisrael. If you do that, then you have a very special bris, a special bond with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So Nesiva Shalom on this, Nesiva Shalom asks a question. At the end of Parshas Mishpatim, the Posuk says as follows, Vayichtoiv Moshe as kol divrei Hashem. Moshe Rabbeinu wrote down as kol divrei Hashem, Vayikach Sefer Abris, Vayikro Bozne Yisrael. That's the Posuk at the end of Parshas Mishpatim. So what do we see here? Rashi says on that pasuk, Rashi says, B'Shem, the Mechilta, that this parsha, when we said, Vayichtoi Moshe, Kol Divrei Hashem, that this parsha that we see in Parsha Mishpatim was actually said, Rashi said before, Matan Torah. What are we referring to? What did Moshe write down? So the, the Mechilta tells us that Moshe wrote down the entire beginning of the Torah. From Bereshis, I mean, where does that come in, right? Because Moshe Rabbeinu, we got the Luchos, we got the Aseris Adibrois. So now the Torah is telling us that Moshe Rabbeinu wrote down all of Bereshis and Shemois up till Parshas Yisroi. That's what Moshe Rabbeinu wrote down, and he wrote down everything that happened. Abram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Mitzrayim, the Shvatim, Parak, all of that, Moshe Rabbeinu wrote down all the way up to the time of Matan Torah. So, but what do we see? We see that the Torah uses a lushan here of Ayikach Sefer Habris. The Moshe Rabbeinu wrote it down, and he took the Sefer Habris. What do we see from here? That we're using Sefer Habris, the word bris, covenant, is used to Torah Shabiksam, what we wrote down in the Torah. So why are we saying, how are we saying, at the beginning of this year we said that when the Torah says, Divrei Habris, it's telling us a special covenant of Torah Shabal Peh. And now we see that Rashi the Mechilta brings down that the bris refers to Torah Shabiksav, not just Torah Shabal Peh, like we said. So how does that Medrash Tanchuma that we mentioned at the beginning of the year go with this Mechilta? The Medrash Tanchuma says the special, when you use a, a Lushen of Bris, that's for Torah Shabal Peh. And now we see that the Mechilta says that Bris is used for Torah Shabiksav also. So the Ramban actually comes and he answers this seeming contradiction of what Bris is the Ramban comes and Ramban answers and he says that Enochanami, there was an original bris before Kabbalah Satoira too. There was a bris. However, as we know from this week's Parsha, something happened in this week's Parsha with the Chet Egel, and says the Ramban that they had a bris with Torah Shabbat Sav, they had it before. But when the Egel happened, that transgressed the bris. And now they lost, they lost the power of that bris. So now they needed a new bris to come along. And this new bris was specifically for Torah Shabal Peh. They had a bris before, you had a bris on the Torah, but they had the Cheda Egel. So they needed a new bris. So Ramban answers the Medjish Tan Chuma and the Mechilta and he explains why it says bris by Torah Shabal Peh and also bris by Torah Shabal So the Siva Shalom, gives his own answer over here and he speaks, says a little bit deeper and something very, very beautiful. He says that you have to know that there are two different levels and types of covenants. A bris, a bond, there's two different levels. There's a very, very deep bond, like we know that sometimes in Tanakh we see the word bris used, for instance, by David and Yonasan. We know that when we speak about friends, a friendship that was so strong, and the love was so strong and unbreakable, they loved each other with an avas nefesh. When we have such a friendship, and the pasuk in Shmuel Aleph, Perak Yudches, tells us, by Yichrois Yohainasan v'David, bris 
Be'avosai aisai kenafshai. They made a covenant, a bond with each other. That's a very, very strong bond. The ultimate, ultimate friendship. Two people that should have been the greatest of enemies. One from Shaul, one from Dov- and then David HaMelech. They should have been the greatest enemies, yet they turned it around and they were willing to give their lives for each other. They had an extremely, extremely strong bond. That's one type of bris. An unbreakable love, an unbreakable avas nefesh, an unbreakable bond. But says in the Siva Shalom that there's also another, and there's another type of covenant, there's another type of bris. And you see in another place in the Torah, the Torah says the word bris, vayichrisu shnehem bris, but that's said by Abraham Avinu and Avimelech. And it goes without saying that, of course, Abraham Avinu and Avimelech did not have any great or deep love for each other. They did not like each other very much, and they had no, almost no connection. Abraham Avinu and Avimelech, the word bris over there has to mean something else. And you know what that is? Bris could also mean a more surface agreement. Avram Avinu and Avimelech, at that point, they had to get along. They had to make things work. They had to make things happen. So they made a bris. They made a surface agreement with each other that now we're not going to fight. They had that, that kind of an agreement. A simple, simple agreement. The bris and the bond that we as Klal Yisrael have with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, for instance, for Shabbos, Shabbos in the Torah, there's a Lushan of Beinu, Beinu, Yisrael. I see that love. That Shabbos is an oy. Shabbos is a bris between Hakadosh Baruch Hu and Klal Yisrael. That is that goes into the category of a very, very deep bond. There's a great when a, when a yid, when a Jew is mekayim, when a person is there, the Shmira Shabbos. That creates a very, very, on a very deep level, a connection and a love between the Jew and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But the original bris that we had before Kabbalah Satoira, before we kept Aseris Adibrois, <laughs> before we kept Shabbos, the bris that we had before that was not as deep. And unfortunately with the ego, once that was broken, that went away. That was more of a simple kind of bond. But this new bris in our parsha, when it came around to the Torah, Shabal Pet, this new bris in our parsha was very, very deep. And the Torah tells us, Ki alpi advarim o'ele, this bris, karati itcha, Baruch Hu, that was the deeper type of bond, like we mentioned with David and Yonason, a very, very deep covenant between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Klai Yisrael. That bris of Torah, Shabal Peh. One, were those who actually, as we said, toil in the Torah and learn Torah Shabal Peh, B'chol Iboy, B'chol Nafshoi, B'chol Moedoi. Those three, those things that you learn, those three requirements in order to learn Torah Shabal Peh, that's on a very, very deep level, level of love between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Kala Yisrael. So besides for learning the Torah, we need to know that when we sit and we actually learn Gemara, and you sit and you learn Torah Shabal Peh, what we're learning here from the Nesiva Shalom is, is that the same way you create a bond with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, a special deep bond, the way you do it with Shabbos, it's that same type of bond that you have when you learn Torah Shabal Peh. And you need to keep that in mind when you set aside your time to learn, when you make a seder to learn. Talmud Bavli, Talmud Yerushalmi, know that a Kaddish Baruch Hu, the Torah is telling us in our parsha, Ki al piyad varim o'ela karati itcha bris v'es Yisrael. You want to become, you want to be in the family of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. You want to be in uh, the bond, in the connection, in the bris with a Kaddish Baruch Hu. That's what you do. You set yourself time to learn Torah Shabbat Peh.